at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. tongue must confess that Christ and Christ alone is Lord. We just pray that you don't wait until then to acknowledge him as such. The book of Luke chapter 19. Luke the 19th chapter. We're going to start reading at verse 1. Luke 19 and verse 1. The gospel as it is written by Dr. Luke 19 and 1. When you have it, if you say amen. amen. And then if all of us who are able would stand in reverence to the reading of God's holy word. It reads there in this New American Standard. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd. For he was of small stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him. For he was about to pass through that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried down and came down and received him gladly. When they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, he's gone to be, with, he's gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come into this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. You may be seated. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to share from the thought this morning, what's your mission? What's your mission? With our heads bowed, Lord, speak to your people. Amen. Amen. Here we are today in scripture, as recorded by Dr. Luke, where we encounter two men in the same town, same date, same time, on Two very different and distinct missions. They both had goals. Each of them had an agenda. One of them, his agenda was all about himself. His agenda was about self-gratification. But the other one's agenda was inclusive of everyone. So as we spend a little time today looking at these two brothers, these, these two sons of Abraham, these two children of God, let us examine ourselves. Yeah. And let us ask ourselves, what's my mission? Yeah, right. What's my mission as an individual? And what's my mission as a member of the body of Christ? Because right. right. brothers and sisters, everybody in here yes. has a mission. Yes, sir. Everybody in here has an agenda. Yes, Everybody in here has goals and hopes and aspirations. Yes. 
And the first goal and hope and aspiration, the first agenda involves self. Yeah. First one is about what am I going to do with the life that God has given me? As a member of the body of Christ, our first goal, our, our agenda, our mission ought to be to please God. I'm not talking about the world. You know, that you look, if they're not a part of the church, their agenda may be something else. Their mission will be something else. But if you are a member of the body of Christ, priority one in our lives is to be effective, ensuring that our lives please God. Not about pleasing mama, not about pleasing daddy or uncle or sister or friend, but it's about is my life pleasing in the sight of God. That's priority one. But then priority two is, does my mission line up with the mission of God's church? Because if I'm a member of the body of Christ, I can't be going this way and the church is going this way. We've got to line up and walk together that God might receive the glory. So let's examine ourselves. Let's 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 look at ourselves as, as we look at these two brothers as they are in the city called Jericho. Verse 1, verse 1 states, for the Son of Man, uh, excuse me, verse 10 gives us the mission of Christ as he enters Jericho. Luke records that Jesus is telling us his mission in verse 10 of chapter 19 where it, it records, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's his mission. That's the mission of Christ. And as his representatives in the world now, that's the mission of his church. If we are not about looking for those and seeking those who are lost to bring them into a relationship with God, we might as well call ourselves a country club social club or fraternity or sorority because look they all do good things but they're not lined up with the mission of Christ that's our goal here it is here it is here it is Christ uh, verse 1 says Jesus was passing through he's going through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem to offer himself as a sacrifice to God for all of humanity. Yes. It's, look, look, he, he's quite often uh, gone through Jericho. Jericho is about 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem. It's near the Jordan River. It's known as being one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world. Y'all yeah. remember Jericho? Yeah. It's in Jericho. It was in Canaan. You, you remember when uh, God's children made their way into the promised land, the first city that they conquered was Jericho. Yeah. There's a problem with Jericho because Jericho had these huge walls and no one could penetrate the walls. And before Joshua and his brothers could even devise a scheme uh, to, to get past the walls of Jericho, God said, sit down. Yeah. I'm going to take care of this for you. Yeah. Now listen and listen carefully. You do exactly as I say. Yeah. And it's going to work out in your favor. He says, for six days, I want y'all to march around the walls of Jericho one time. Not two times, not three times, not a half a time, not one for one time around the wall. And then go somewhere and sit yourself down. <laughs> On the seventh day, he says, I need you to march around seven times. And then you put the trumpets out front, put the praise leaders out front. And when they blow the trumpet, you begin to shout and give God glory and watch me work it out for you. Some of y'all know the story. They shouted and the walls came tumbling down. Some of y'all don't hear me. Maybe, 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 just maybe the reason why your wall hadn't come down is because you hadn't shouted yet. Maybe. Just maybe the reason why you're still catching hell is because you're keeping your mouth closed. Yeah. Maybe if you open your mouth and say, Lord, make a way, somebody's going to hit me after a while. He will fight your battles. But you've got to do exactly as the Lord instructs. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. They're in Jericho. Jesus is 
making his way to Jerusalem. Now, he's been through Jericho before. This isn't his first time, but this is the last time that he'll make his way through Jericho. The Bible says as he travels through Jericho, uh, verse 2 of this 10th chapter says, there was a brother who was the chief tax collector. His name was Zacchaeus. And we assume that Zacchaeus was a resident of Jericho. He wasn't passing by, y'all. He lived there. Or at least somewhere in the region. And, and Zacchaeus, according to verse 2, had done pretty good for himself financially. Because Zacchaeus was rich. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says Zacchaeus had a little, little money. Ain't nothing wrong with being rich. Really, isn't it? There ain't nothing wrong with being rich. It's just about your motives for wanting to be rich. You want to be rich so you can take care of the three people who are, are most important to you? You know, me, myself. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Or do you want to get rich so you can be effective and helpful to the entire community so you can be a blessing to not just yourself but to be a blessing to everybody nothing wrong with wanting to be rich it's your motives behind being rich that matters but Zacchaeus Zacchaeus had a mission and according to verse 2 he has uh, accomplished his mission. Zacchaeus was walking around singing, I want money. Lots and lots of money. Don't keep asking me why. I want to be rich. He's just walking around Jericho singing his song and counting his money. Zacchaeus has some coins, y'all. His plan has succeeded. He's got everything that he wants. But the way he came about it did not line up with God. See, Zacchaeus got rich off of the government, or working for the government, I should say. He got rich off of uh, 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 swindling God's people. For you see, Zacchaeus was a tax collector for the government. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus said, uh, I ain't going to be rich fishing. I ain't going to get rich that way. I ain't doing that. Come on, come on. I'm not going to get rich taking care of a bunch of smelly sheep. I ain't going to get rich that way. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to get rich building folks' homes. I ain't going to get rich. I, I can't do that. I can't do so. So how can I get rich and not have to work as hard? How? how, how? Oh, the government is hiring. He says, Caesar has sent out a decree that he's looking for tax collectors. Zacchaeus right. says, that, that sounds pretty good. I can make tea time, go get my manicure, I get my pedicure, get my massage, and I ain't got to work that hard. He said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. let me know when the application come out. Zacchaeus found out when the application was going to go out to the Brumfield. He went down, he filled it out, he interviewed, he interviewed pretty good because they hired him. And then he worked his way up the ladder. He became the chief tax collector. Now, tax collectors were some low down and no good people. I ain't talking about the IRS, so don't y'all dear. Y'all leave here saying rib, 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 talking about the IRS. April 15 ain't got here yet, so I can't, I can't talk about them yet. But he decided that he was going to swindle God's people. See, this, this is how it worked in antiquity. Caesar would set uh, a certain uh, tax bracket or amount that he expected to receive from each region. He says, okay, Jericho, I need $10,000. You give me $10,000 and we're good. And he would hire tax collectors 
to collect the money. And what the brothers would do is they would say, well, I tell you what, uh, Caesar, you've hired me. I'm going to pay you the $10,000 myself. And then what I will do is collect from the people the $10,000. But then what they would do is they would collect more than the $10,000. They might collect fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 from the people. And Caesar said, look, as long as I got my ten, I don't care what you do. It does not matter to me. So they were robbing God's people in order to take care of Caesar. Some of y'all don't hit me. Look, 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 look. Zacchaeus was a Jew. Zacchaeus was one of them. Zacchaeus reminds me of the saying that I used to hear my elders say, all skin folk ain't kinfolk. They might look like you. They might talk like you. But they have their own agenda. And they will cut you in your head if that will satisfy their agenda. So here it is. He's got rich. He has uh, 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 robbed God's people. And Jesus showed up. But as rich as Zacchaeus was, his life, look, he was not satisfied. All the money he had, he was still missing something. There was something that, that, that he wasn't quite whole. All the money in the world can't satisfy him. All the money in the world, baby, look, I don't care how much money you have. There's some stuff you're going to run into that money can't handle. There's some problems that you're going to go through. I don't care how rich you are. Look, rich or poor, we all got to go through it. Hell shows up in everybody's life. Kia said something ain't quite right. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. Somebody say, well, Rev, how do you know his life wasn't complete? What, what, what makes you say that? I say that because Zacchaeus climbed up a sycamore tree. Grown men don't climb trees. We just don't. Now, <clears throat> we might take a child and push him up in the tree, say, yeah, you go up there and get it. You go up there and show me what's going on. But grown men, don't, un, un, unless that's our job. Now, if we tree cutters, we'll climb up there. But most of us ain't climbing. We, as a matter of fact, we'll uh, stand down and point. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah, that one. Go. No, no, move over some. But us ain't climbing trees for the fun of it. This brother climbed up a tree. Now, let me say this for, for, for full transparency. I walk and I'm out jogging and I see a dog that's big enough <laughs> and he looks my way. First thing I do is look for a tree or a car or a truck or something I can jump on. I I'm looking for it. But thank God I ain't had to do it yet. So maybe I ought to amend that to say grown men don't climb trees unless dogs chasing them. Maybe, maybe I, I, I need to amend that. That kid climbed up in a tree to see God. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you that when you need him enough, you'll do stuff you wouldn't ordinarily do. When you need him enough. When you know he has what you need. And you see him passing by. You won't just sit there and say, well, ain't nothing I can do. You will jump up and scream and holler, Lord, why are you passing out blessings? Don't pass by me. But stop by and see about me. Bible says Zacchaeus climbed up in that tree. And when he positioned himself, Zacchaeus was all about himself until he recognized self wasn't enough. And when he concentrated on finding God, 
God found him. Some of y'all still don't hear me. Look, Zacchaeus got up in that tree and looked down to where Jesus was. And when Jesus got to him, the Bible says Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, you the one I came here for. Zacchaeus, come on down. Because today I'm going to your house. That's good news right there. Yeah, that's, that's great news right there to know that God will come home with us. Check him out now. Check him out. Check him out. Check him out. Zacchaeus in the tree. Jesus passes by. Now remember, had Jesus not been in Jericho, he would not have seen Zacchaeus. Some of y'all still hear me. If we stay locked up in the church, we're not going to see who God wants us to see. Because they ain't coming here on Sunday morning. But if we go out there to where they are, and, and look, 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 just as this brother looked and saw Jesus, when those who are lost look at us, they ought to see Jesus. When they look at us, They ought to see the God within us and just like Zacchaeus celebrate the fact that God has shown up in their lives. I love what happens. I love it. I love it because Jesus says I'm going to your house and everybody in the hood got upset. All of them got, they, 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 they got mad because they just didn't understand why would Jesus go to this man's house? I mean, He's been robbing us blind. He's been stealing from us. He's been treating us as if we are nothing. This man would not even look our way. Look, look, if we were on fire, I don't think he'd spit on us to put us out. And Jesus would go to his house. He could have went to the home of an upstanding citizen. And here he's going hanging out with a thug. Why would Jesus do that out of all the people? Because, baby, thugs need Jesus, too. But a thug ain't going to find Jesus if the church doesn't go to the thug. Some of y'all still don't hear me. Y'all still don't hear me. Y'all still don't hear me. Look. Just because it looks like all is well in their lives. If they don't have Jesus, baby, they don't have anything. And it's up to the church to let them know that money can't get you to heaven. Money can't put you in a relationship with God. That kids realized that something was wrong and he came to Jesus. Here's the church. We move as Jesus moved. Jesus did not build a building and say, they coming. But instead, he went to where the people were. And his light shined in such a way that they recognized who he was. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But but, but all I'm saying to you is, we've got to have a mission that lines up with God. We've got to have a mission that allows our light to shine in such a way that people look beyond us and see the Christ on the inside of us. We've got to have a witness that is such that it won't be about us, but it will be about the God that we serve. I love, I love, I love, I love what happens here because Jesus has his mission And and Zacchaeus has his mission. But those two missions are on opposite ends of the spectrum. But they're walking towards one another. And what I know is when two folks who are opposing approach each other, somebody's got to give. Somebody's got to bow down. Somebody got to say, I throw up my hands because you're too much for me to handle. Some of y'all still don't hear me. I love it because wherever Jesus shows up, whatever is in opposition to God has to bow down. I love it. I really do. I love it. I love it, Redwood, because whenever Jesus was approached by sickness, sickness had to bow down. 
Whenever Jesus was approached by blindness, blindness had to bow down. Whenever Jesus was approached by deaf folk and leprous folk, the deaf started hearing and the lepers were cleansed. Somebody gonna hit me after a while. And when Jesus encountered death, I don't care if it was Jairus' daughter, I don't care if it was, it was the boy in Nan on his way to the cemetery, it doesn't even matter if it was Lazarus, when death and Jesus were in the same facility, death had to bow down. Have I got anybody in this crowd who can celebrate that Jesus showed up and changed your life? That Jesus showed up, turned you around, and placed your feet on solid ground? Is there anybody in here who can celebrate? I used to think one way, but the Lord touched me, and now my mind is stayed on the Lord. I used to walk one way, but now I'm walking with Jesus, and he has never failed me yet. I got to sit down. We got to go, but let me ask you one question. Has the Lord been good to you? Has he really been good to you? If the Lord's been good, say it. If the Lord's been good, shout glory. He's good, Redwood, and he ain't good sometimes. He's good all of the time. Are there any worshipers in this crowd? Is there anybody in here that can shout hallelujah to the God? To the God that we serve. What's your mission? You self-centered? Only thinking of yourself. Or are you thinking about those who need Jesus most? Starting with family, friends, community, and the world at large. But your mission has got to line up with God's mission for the church. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Then the second is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the mission. When we please God and work to serve man, God will take care of us. What's your mission? Jesus says the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. He came to touch, to move, to renew and restore, to heal those who are most in need. The doors of Redwood are open. As the Lord speaks to your heart, as your spirit communicates with his spirit. And his spirit is saying to you, Redwood is your church home. Redwood is not a perfect church. We are all in. You can be poured into and be about our father's business. Is there one? Is there one in this moment? One in this time? The doors of Redwood are open. But much more important than that, the arms of God are open to receive you right now as you are.